Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. We get a leak on the first names on Mark Pope's Kentucky staff outside of the guy that he is bringing with him from BYU. My buddy, Cal Tucker, yes, he blocked me. Yes, he talks crap, but he's a pretty good reporter. I'm not going to lie. Put out two names that I think are worth noting really quick. Second one, old school SEC coach, Mark Fox. He's kind of in an administrative role. I'll get to that one in a minute. But the other name that I absolutely think is worth discussing and Kentucky fans, you should be excited about this one is Jason Hart the former USC longtime assistant, and oh, by the way, also not only a longtime assistant, but he ran G League Ignite for the last few years. And so I know on Thursday night into Friday, there was a mad scramble from Kentucky fans to find out more information about him, his background, his whatever. Listen, I I'm not going to say I know Coach Hart well, but for people who do not know me, I do live in LA. I spent a ton of time around USC and I would argue just from a distance, not saying we're best friends, we get on the phone and chat, but I feel as confident talking about Jason Hart as I as, as I think anyone in the national media should, okay? How about this? Producer Matt, why don't you go ahead and pop up the tweet really quick? Because I have been advocating for Jason Hart to be a college head coach since 2021. This is a tweet that I put out in 2021. Um, it was in reference to Andy Enfield, who was then the USC head coach, said, the fact Jason Hart is not a head coach right now is a joke. In 2021, March of 2021, I said, I've said for years and I'll keep saying it, USC's Jason Hart is the most overqualified assistant coach in college hoops. Great teacher, great coach, great recruiter, and father figure to these players. At some point, someone will wisen up and hire him and they will win immediately when they do it. Thank you very much, uh, producer Matt, for popping that up. But listen, for anyone who thinks I'm just saying this because, oh, I'm trying to get Kentucky fans in my corner. I'm trying to pander to Kentucky fans. No, 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 no. I don't pander. I tell you the truth. I tell you what I like when I like it. And I tell you when I don't like uh, in, in uh, I, I'll tell you what, what I don't like when I don't like it. And so I was around Jason Hart and I am here to tell you exactly today what I put out in 2021. He is, in my opinion, as complete of a basketball coach as I have ever been around. For someone who doesn't know his background, first of all, played 10 years in the NBA. So he's got that NBA credibility, okay? Played in the league. You want to know what it takes to get there? You want to know what it takes to stay there? I'm your guy. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to tell you what life is really like. He played at Syracuse, one big in college. I know for elite high school players, they don't really care as much about the college aspect as the NBA aspect. But one in college, played for a Hall of Famer, went to the NBA, played for 10 plus years in the NBA. But beyond that, being around him at USC, I was so impressed by the, he's a complete coach. It's not just, oh, I played. It's not just, I'm a recruiter. It's not just, I'm this. It's not just, I'm that. He was a guy that, listen, I love Andy Enfield. So this is zero knock on him. But Andy, you know, in, empowers his assistants. And I give him credit for that. And I was at practices where Jason Hart is running the show, helping run the show. Andy Enfield is off, you know, maybe talking to a kid or working with a kid one-on-one. -on -one, and Jason Hart has the attention of the other 11 guys in that room. He is a guy that is hard on players, but fair. Kind of that new age coach that he's going to ride you hard, but he's going to be fair to you as well. And so he's a great coach, great teacher, played basketball. But let me take it a step further. He is an elite A++ recruiter as well. First of all, he ran G League Ignite for the last few years like a college program. And if you remember, when G League Ignite started, it was kind of like, oh, you know, if a kid doesn't want to go to college, they have an option here. And then about two, three years ago when he took over, they started getting commitments that kind of ruffle feathers of college basketball coaches. Scoot Henderson reclassifies, plays two years in G League Ignite. Who was behind that? Jason Hart. Uh, Ron Holland, remember, he decommitted last year from Texas. Oh, he's going to go to Arkansas. Maybe he goes here. Maybe he goes there. And then G League Ignite swoops in at the 11th hour, gets his commitment he plays at, at with the G League Ignite program. 
Matas Buzelis, remember him. Five-star McDonald's All-American. Didn't even consider college. Jay Hart took his commitment a year in advance and said, don't even go to college. Just come here and develop. And so he is an elite recruiter. By the way, at, at USC, just from a recruiting perspective, he checked all of the boxes. He checked every single thing that a Kentucky fan would want. Why do I say that? Because first off, they did, because because I saw this from Kentucky, well, who did he really recruit at USC? Go ahead and look at how many guys at USC are in the pros right now. First off, the highest of high in terms of recruits. Evan Mobley, McDonald's All-American, now with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Anyeka Akangwu, uh, a kid that was a McDonald's All-American. Chino Hills, played with the Ball Brothers. Committed to USC, was a top 10 pick. You might not remember him. He played in that COVID year that got canceled in 2020. USC was trending as like a four or five seed. Anyeka was a star. He played at USC. But it's not just the ability to recruit five stars. De'Anthony Melton, I remember talking to Jason Hart about him. He told me, he said, De'Anthony Melton, we were his only power five, power six offer. De'Anthony Melton was trending as a first round pick. Now he got caught up in the FBI stuff. He didn't end up doing anything wrong, but he got suspended by the school, uh, dro- you know, uh, uh, leaves to prepare for the NBA draft. De'Anthony Melton was trending as a first round pick. He's still in the NBA right now. He was a second rounder playing for, I believe, the Philadelphia 76ers. Jordan McLaughlin, go ahead and look him up. In the NBA, was a like three-star recruit, developed at USC. Chemezi Metu, developed at USC, was a two, three-year player. And so this is the guy, Kentucky fans, you've been telling me you want. He can, he's proven he can recruit the elite of the elite, but he also has an eye for talent. And, and by the way, I don't want to say that he did it alone. USC had a great staff, has had a great staff under Andy Enfield, you know, the entire time he was there. Tony Bland was there. Tony Bland just got hired at Washington. Chris Capco was there. Chris Capco's going with Andy Enfield to SMU. Eric Mobley, Evan Mobley's dad was on staff for a little while. So it, it was a joint effort. I'm not sitting here saying Jason Hart did it alone. But you've been telling me for years, we don't just want the one and dones. We don't just want the five stars that are going to leave after a year. We'd like a couple of them. But we'd also like some guys that are going to develop in the program. Some guys that are we're going to get to know as fans. Maybe this crazy thing called a red shirt, and then a guy comes back a year later. Jason Hart's done all that. He's developed guys in the program, four-year guys that have turned into NBA players that didn't play as freshmen and became four-year players. He's found diamonds in the rough. He's also recruited those five-star kids. So I'm telling you, Kentucky fans, listen, I'll be blunt. I didn't even know this guy was available. But clearly, look, just, just read the tweet that I put out in 2021. If you think I am making this up to make Kentucky fans happy, this was a hell of a plant by Torres, okay? If you think Torres put this out three years ago thinking one day he'd be the head coach or the lead assistant at Kentucky, you're out of your mind. But he is an elite assistant. I love it. Um, you know, from the Mark Pope or, or the Mark Fox perspective, excuse me, I'll be honest, doesn't really move the needle for me. It's an administrative role. Listen, we need, every program needs now in this NIL portal era, a guy that's monitoring the portal, a guy that's working with the collective. The head coach can't be everywhere at every time. Mark Pope, or I keep, uh, Mark Fox, tripping over my marks over here. We got Mark Stoops in football, Mark Pope in basketball, Mark Fox as an assistant. Mark Fox was in an administrative role at Georgetown. And I think what Mark Pope sees is a veteran guy. He's been around basketball, probably doesn't want to recruit. I'll be honest, he's not a very good recruiter anyway, if I'm being perfectly honest. So put him in that administrative role. I don't know if it's technically the GM role, but I am here to tell you, Kentucky fans, I really like the staff that they're putting together. Obviously, Mark Pope is bringing his right-hand man uh, from BYU as well. Uh, We talked about him, Fluger, the other day. I really like the coaching staff that Mark Pope has put together.